to session two of the Fast Start Breakout. Uh, my name is Jeff Rubenstein. I will be your host for today. We're going to continue on for those of you who are here uh, for Ray Leonard Jr. and Dr. Joy Wright. Was that incredible or what? Was that awesome? Go ahead and type into the chat box if you just really enjoyed that. Or give a clap like uh, my boy Cole here up on stage did. While you're uh, while you're getting ready and getting situated and resituated, uh, I want you to take a look at the um, screens up here on the stage for our, our next three guests that are going to be joining us, um, talking about how to crush it in your first year of real estate. And what we're going to do is we're really going to piggyback off of a lot of what Ray and Joy mentioned when they started to to. You know, when they talked about everything that they're doing as far as productivity in their lives and their businesses, and as many of you realized uh, in the military, you know, there are lives at stake, um, whether it's ours or abroad, right? So when we talk about having productivity in our businesses, when we talk about business, it makes a huge deal when it comes to productivity and making sure, again, that we have that flight up. Um, so I want to take a moment here to, uh, to introduce our next three guests. sit down oh no okay uh let's see here um can you all hear me okay though Wait. yes look at that yes 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 i love it i love it i love it i love it okay and then also for the presenters on stage um if you're not speaking just go ahead and mute your mic um that way we can prevent any type of feedback here uh so the first person i'd like to introduce uh whoops i just changed the slide there which was happening to me earlier too uh you know, is, is a good friend of mine. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet this gentleman back in 2018 um, out on the Spartan battlefield. And uh, what I can tell you is that this guy is a warrior. Um, this guy is one of the best human beings I've ever met in my life. Um, he took me under his wing um, when I was brand new in the sport of Spartan racing and shared everything um, with me that he has. And it was just a, an incredible, incredible experience. He's a 23 year a U.S. Army Ranger, um, Special Operations. You can see all of his credentials up there. Um, Cole, um, thank you so much for your service to our country. Thank you so much for being a, a great friend. Um, I brought Cole up here because uh, he shares so much wisdom, so much knowledge, and, and so much inspiration when it comes to getting things started, being productive. And your first year in real estate is really hard. I know I've been there. I've been in the business for 17 years. It's really hard, you guys. So I get that. Cole's going to shed some light on that. Then we also have Sean Cochran, who is a social media guru, millions of views on Facebook. He's going to shed all kinds of information on how to be productive with your social media, how to create followers, how to get engagement, all that good stuff. And then, oh, I changed the slide again. Sean, you want to be on the left? Or you want to be on the right? Huh? Tannen, I'm sorry. I've oh, you all. <laughs> Tan and I've bounced you all over the place, my friend. I really, I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. And then we have Icon Agent Tan and Tessin. She is an amazing agent with EXP Realty. She has some great, great information to share on how she's become very successful, how she's partnered up with her husband to create a mega team and how they just crush it out there. And uh, we're going to go back to uh, how we started in, uh, in our real estate here. So, um, Let's go ahead. I'm going to start with a uh, just a general question um, for the three of you, and, and I'll let whoever wants to jump in first uh, go ahead and, and answer that question. And we're going to start very globally here. 
And I'm going to ask you, and again, you guys, this is very specific to your, your first year in real estate. Okay. There's 542 of you here in the room. And my guess is that you're new. Okay. And you really want to build your business. And I want you to take, we're not going to give you the silver, a silver bullet. Okay. There's no silver bullets in here. There's no magic pill. Uh, what you're going to hear is going to emulate what you heard earlier from Ray and Joy, and we're going to give you some different spins on it. So whoever wants to take this question, and I'll give you the, all three of you the opportunity to, to answer it. What does productivity mean to you? How do you define it in your life, in your business, uh, and, and, and what does it mean to you? I'll start. I'll go first. Hi everyone, I'm Tana Teston from Orlando, Florida. So I I absolutely love this topic because productivity is so different than just being busy. And I cannot stand when people say, oh, I'm so busy, I can't do this. Or I'm so busy, how am I gonna fit this in their day? Because there's such a difference between being busy and being productive. So for me, I'm, I'm a list person. I, I love my lists of things that I need to do. And everything I do is either on my calendar or on a list, or I'm writing it down to do later because I have to remember to do it later. And I block out my days that way. I say, here's what I got to work on. Here's my priorities. Here's my uh, needs to be done, but there's no rush. And here's my, I'll get to that later if I can get to it. Um, so that's how I kind of manage my productivity and building up my day of what's going to be the most productive, get that done first. That is awesome. That, that's awesome. Um, was that Sean or Cole who wanted to go next? Oh, I can go as long as everybody can hear me okay. Sounds good. So for me, I'm primarily a buyer's guy. <clears throat> so something like 84% of my deals are buyers. So how I define productivity is generally by, I want at least three, uh, three potential clients to fill out a pre-approval with my loan officer partners per week. I figure if I get three per week, that's four, uh, I'm sorry, 12 per month. And even if I get you know two or three of those, I'm adding two, three or four new deals <clears throat> A month, even if some fall out, it still makes me very productive. So I'm focused 90% of the time on simply getting some gosh darn body to fill out that pre approval with my lender partner. If they get pre approved, great. I've got a new client we're off and running. And if their credit is poop, then that's something in my pipeline and the loan officer can, you know, work on getting their scores back to where they need to be. But how I define it is three per week, which is why I'm constantly you know, spewing the same message on social media all the time, right? Stop making your landlord rich. I'm doing that so I can get just the, as many people as possible to try to be pre-approved. So that is how shortly I define my productivity. I love it. Love it. Um, Cole, how would you define productivity? What does it mean to you? Yeah, hey Jeff. First of all, hey, thank you very much for uh, that introduction. And I, you know, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't take a quick second to say, hey, thank you to all the U.S. veteran men and women, you know, for the years of dedicated service, many sacrifices, and selfless service to accomplish the mission. I salute you all. You know, as I sat in uh, a couple of the other sessions with, uh, you know, Commander D uh, Denver, as well as the previous one. And, uh, Dr. Joy Wright, I saw in the audience, there's quite a few, you know, military veterans, uh, you know, in, in the, uh, in this virtual world. So, uh, one, I just want to say thank you to all of them uh, and everything you've done. So, with regards to, you know, productivity, obviously in the military, productivity is key. And I know a lot of people in the audience who don't have a lot of military experience would maybe question, wow, it's a government. Every time I hear the government, Oxymoron, you know, efficiency and productivity. But I tell you, the military is where I really learned to understand and really, I guess, peel back what is productivity. So, you know, everything I think starts with a problem statement. And for me, the problem statement is, you know, when I'm trying to understand and what productivity means, it was lay it out because I can't get to a end state or a solution unless I fully understand what productivity means. So for me, I look at when I peel it back, it's a way of efficiently and effectively delivering 
or delivering an output, a product. So I'll say that again. It's a means of efficiently and or effectively delivering or developing an output, a product. Because not everything we're going to do is it going to be a tangible uh, product that you can touch. As we, we've already stated, it could be developing a brief. So that's an output. Now, with, with that and with productivity, you know, I think there's some cross-cutting formulas, whether they're, you're in real estate, whether you're in the military, you know, whether you work uh, in a, in a uh, assembly line at a uh, uh, car manufacturing. There's some formulas that's extremely important to productivity, and it's an valuable resource, and it's people. Whether you're a singleton agent or you're working of a team of two or 20, it, the most valuable resource in productivity is people. I do not care, you know, what you can think you can automate, uh, how many different algorithms, how strong machine learning, artificial intelligence, ultimately productivity is going to come down to the human nature, the human aspect. So the other piece of that, of course, and we talked that, uh, you know, Ray Leonard and Joy uh, talked about time. You know, those are two resources we never have enough. But I would just, you know, when I think of productivity, efficiently and effectively delivering an output, but, and we'll, I'm, I'm sure we'll unpackage this a little more, the, the most important valuable resource that drives at the core capability is going to be people. Gosh, I, I, that just makes so much sense uh, from, from all three of you. I mean, you know, from Tannen talking about just, you know, getting things done is not the same as productivity. And I think a lot of times we get very confused with, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to-do lists. The problem with to-do lists is that we choose the things that are most easiest, that take us the least amount of time, and we avoid the most important things many times. And when we can make that shift to doing what's most important, that's when we create that level of productivity. You know, and, and I love what Sean said about, um, you know, it's, he mentioned SMART goals. Um, for those of you in the audience, who knows what SMART goals are? Go ahead and type what that acronym means in the chat box so those who don't know what it is will know what that is. And Sean, that's exactly what he was talking about. And he knows. He knows his numbers. He's very specific. 84% of his business is buyers. And did you catch what he said? Stop making your landlord rich is probably what is driving a lot of his social media, and I'm sure he'll get into that in a little bit. And then Cole, I mean – the, the, the chat box is going crazy with, you know, everything starts with a problem statement. That makes so much sense because if you know what the problems are, if you know what your roadblocks or your boundaries may be in moving forward, then you can make a reasonable plan to be able to do that. And guys, he nailed it when he said our most valuable resource and productivity is people. Okay. We are in a people oriented business, right? We got into this business because we like working with people, right? We, we enjoy being around people, the socialization, helping people get what they want, right? So just remember that when we, when we start really, you know, unpacking a lot of productivity, it is, we can do certain things, like we're being productive now in, the, in this environment, but all of us can certainly attest to the fact that we would prefer to be live in Las Vegas, right? Not for the reasons that you may be thinking, but for specifically for this and everything else too, the unconference of the unconference. So, all right, awesome, you guys. So the next question really goes, yes, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and probably the most important, it needs to be time sensitive, guys, right? Um, so let me ask you guys this, and I'll let you guys uh, jump in as uh, you feel fit. Um, when was a time that, you struggled with being productive because we have a lot of new agents in the audience and it's it's hard in real estate well let me let me rephrase that it's simple not easy um in real estate especially getting started to to really know where to go and we try different avenues uh, such as lead in lead generation or follow up and, and a lot of times we don't see the results right away and and agents struggle and it's because of productivity so how do you how do you deal with with any type of struggling with with productivity is specifically in what you do and what did you do to to overcome that yes can i um address that one yes please awesome um i don't i don't know if uh well let me say this so here's the thing as a brand new agent one of the big mistakes that i see and i see it even in long time agents has to do with not really looking at real estate like a job and not creating a schedule for yourself. In other words, looking at it as a hobby, right? So 
you know, you get up and you don't feel like, you know, doing your projects that day. So you hang out in your pajamas and you don't get stuff done. Next thing you know, it's two o'clock and maybe you're heading off to happy hour. <laughs> right? So if it was a job, you would never do that with your schedule. And so to me, one of the most important things that you can do as a new agent and honestly, at any time in your career is to really line out a schedule for yourself. Look at it as an eight to five job or a nine to five or whatever that is and create a schedule for yourself that literally plugs everything in from prospecting time to client follow up time to you know new lead generation time to working on marketing or you know a project but are you really creating a schedule where you log in first thing monday morning what do you have lined out for the day and I've gotten into the routine as well, where when you run into somebody and they say, oh, we really should get together. And then you run into them a year later and you're like, oh, we really should get together. And a year later, oh, you know, and it never happens. So now when somebody says that, I say, awesome, give me two or three times that work for you. And I'm going to put it in my calendar right now. And I literally live by my calendar. And if I'm not following my calendar, I know my day is going to go to heck in a handbasket. And I'm not going to be anywhere near as productive as a lot of what they talked about earlier. Absolutely. I mean, the calendar is, is huge. Um, who else would like to tap into? Um, hey, Jeff, can I jump in on that? Yes, and, please do. And tie on? I, I think that was wonderful. Exactly. Uh, you know, some great points there. And I would like to take it a little step further, you know, especially now that a lot of people are, are working not in an, a traditional office and environment and we're in this, you know, somewhat disconnected virtual environment, disconnected the means where you don't have, you know, uh, a co-worker sitting right next to you. We're having to interact in, in this environment here. I would say you almost for that you know, getting down to that productivity uh, and the scheduling, you got to look at yourself. You need to do some self-reflection and a self-assessment. You know, are you doing everything you need to be to be successful, to be productive? All right. Are you making a sacrifice? Are you being disciplined and putting in the actual effort for your work? Because that's key in, in, in prioritizing, you know, your occupation over some of those personal wants, right? A lot of people now are living on social media and, you know, that, that fear of being left out, you know, uh, was that FOMO, right? So I say you have to work hard and you can play hard, but there's a time and place for everything. So I, I think we also have to do, you know, that, that really self-assessment, self-reflection um, and think about, are you putting in the real work to meet those goals? to be productive. So, cause ultimately you're trying to build credibility it comes back to people, right? Whether it's yourself or in a team, you're building your credibility and credibility in your company. So I, I just wanted to, to layer that on as well. That's fantastic. That can, um, perfect. Go ahead, Sean. I, I was going to jump in and, um, to, to answer your question, the time I struggled, especially when I was new is because I didn't have a big sphere yet, right? I mean, I was new, I was a baby. So I didn't have a lot of people just throwing me deals or just saying, oh, hey, Sean, good to see you again. Can you sell my house? So the, what I decided early on to do is, is video. And what I mean is anyone who follows me, I overshare, right? I don't share things just about real estate. My daughter and I go bowling, I'm sharing on my business page. You know, we went to this little zoo thing in Chicago Lamberties parrot sat on your head. I shared that, right? I share my life with my audience and you think it's just posting, but what, what ends up happening is it ends up making you productive because a lot of times people buy from people. And if they see you sharing things besides just, Hey, let me list your house. Cause I'm Sean and I'm, I'm a, I'm a realtor. Let me, let me help you buy a house. They seem like they get to know you. And I get a lot of leads in my inbox from people saying, hey, I saw your video with you and your daughter, Boltley. And it was amazing. And you know, I'm, it just so happens my wife and I are looking for a house, right? So if I'm ever feeling unproductive, a lot of times I'm just gonna post a video. Look at my page, a lot of them are random. And I do mean random, but I'm trying to give my audience more of Sean. And my hope is people buy from people and maybe they'll actually like me uh, enough to use me as an agent. So if you ever get bored, Pick up that camera. I don't care if you're tall, skinny, short, fat, black, white, Jew or Gentile. Pick up that camera and, and, and talk to your audience, engage them. It'll help you be more productive. There's my two cents on that. 
and that's great, Sean. And and the the chat box is blowing up with very specific uh, um, Facebook questions, which I'm going to throw you under the bus for a minute. Um, Sean may want to stick around and meet with any of you and talk to you guys about this. You can message him. We'll give you information on how you can get a hold of everybody up here for specific questions. We'll do our best at the end for some Q and A. Um, but I want to keep things rocking and rolling here. Tannen, our icon yeah. agent. What's been your biggest challenges with productivity and, and how did oh. you, how did you overcome those? I had a ton of things standing in my way when I first started as an agent. So before becoming a real estate agent, I had 17 years experience doing real estate closings and managing a title office. So coming into real estate, you know, I was familiar with the, the whole industry. I've been doing it all my life. Joined my husband's team. He was doing about $6 million a year. I came in thinking, you know what? How hard could this be? I cut ch agents checks all the time. I see this guy doing it. This has got to be a piece of cake, right? So I get there my first week, I tell my husband, I said, we're going to go. Oh, let me, let me back up a minute. Put my notice in at the title company to get my license as in real estate. Two weeks later, I found out pregnant surprise, baby number four, totally unexpected. Um, it was a little scary and we thought, you know, is this the right move? jumping into real estate, being 100% commission for both of us and expecting a fourth child. But I said, you know what, I'm all in. I've already got my license, I'm gonna do it. So joined my husband in my first week, I said, all right, we're gonna go out door knocking and we're gonna do this. And he's like, you gotta chill out. I'm not a door knocker, that's not how I grew my business. It's like, you're a, a woman, I'm not gonna let you go out there and door knock. And we had our, our things, but it was a realization to me that everybody does things differently. There's so many different ways to get business. So my first year, I had this distraction of, of having a child and then the baby was born. So my first two years, I was just kind of half in real estate, half um, being a stay at home mom and enjoying every minute of it. But by the end of year two, we were starting to run out of money and I wasn't contributing as much as I thought I would to the to the business. And I said, okay, I'm either neither going to jump all in and do this or go back into title. And I didn't want to be into, into title. Right about this time is when we got introduced to EXP and I was so flipping excited. I was so excited to, to, to do this new company. I think that's what we needed. This, whatever EXP has, let's do it. I'm all in. I'm not going back to title. We're, we're going for it. So we said, you know what? We don't have a lot of money, but we're going to put our daughter into daycare full time. And we're going to jump in and we did both feet. We said, we're going to take any, but we had zero listings getting down to zero money in the bank, zero listings. And we said, we're going to start doing open houses for other realtors every chance we have. And we did every weekend. We got grandma and grandpa to come over, watch the other kids. And we said, we're going to go out, we're going to do open houses. So here we're dividing in concrete and we're, we're showcasing them on Facebook and everybody starts looking at, they're like, wow, you guys are killing it out there. You guys are doing, you got open houses here and we're promoting the heck out of them. And they don't know, the consumer doesn't know that these aren't our listings. We're just saying it's a, a brokered listing by EXP. So we'd even do a million dollar listing and everybody's like, man, you guys are just doing awesome. You're doing so good. And them seeing us being busy and them seeing us being productive and them seeing us being excited again, because joining EXP and everything that it was offering, we started going to the eye conversations. We started going to the, um, the meetings in world and we're like, this is unbelievable. We got so excited about waking up every day to go into work that it resonated with the people around us and they saw it and they, they said, gosh, you guys are killing all of a sudden people that had used other realtors in the past for their transactions that we were friends with, still friends with, you know, no hard feelings. They started coming to us and wanting to bring their business to us, wanting us to help them with their homes, wanting us to help them with their listings. So just by having that change in mindset and change in, you know what, all in, go in, jump in two feet, let's do this. Find opportunities to showcase that you are good at what you do and you're um, successful at what you do, resonates with the people around you. Those, the business just started coming in. So here we were broke by the end of the quarter at 2018. First quarter in January, we did over $2 million, or, um, $2 million that first quarter which we're a $6 million a year agents. So here we've already done a third of our business in the first quarter. We're like, wow, this is really working. And it just kind of snowballed down after that. So my first two years was a lot of things that were kind of holding me back from jumping in. But once I changed my mindset and we said, we're all in, it just started coming. It was a snowball after that. 
So you changed your mindset. Is that what you said? It is. Yeah, it was yep. a change. It's getting excited about doing real estate and, and um, like our other speaker said, getting up at eight in the morning, getting excited to go, go to work and spending your day being productive. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You, you hit on so many great topics there. Um, Dustin, you, I mean, you put adversity. I mean, the, I called you Tustin. I call people by their last names, Tannen. Uh, your name is, you know, it just flows. Tannen and Tustin. It could go Tustin, Tannen, right? I, dig I digress. Uh, adversity, right? Opportunity. These are the things that you looked at, and I loved how your excitement grew and your enthusiasm in your voice just just propelled us when you talked about joining EXP and how it provided you those opportunities. But here's the thing. You took proactive measures. You took action and started doing a lot of open houses. So audience, I hope you paid very close attention to that. Stay at home mom, lots of different challenges, getting into the business, you know, 17, all of these different things. She started doing open houses for other agents. Now here's the little asterisk, check with your state broker, make sure that it's okay in your state, what have you, but go do the open houses. I teach this all the time. It's the key. It opens up other opportunities for you to lead generate, to contact more people. She was creative, right? And, and how they, they did their ads and how they talked to people. Um, and, and then again, that excitement, but here's the thing, you guys, people started to recognize her and her business and her husband's business because of them getting creative and doing the things that other people weren't doing. Okay. So, so take that with a grain of salt. And then Cole, I love what you said. We got to take a look at ourselves, right? We have to take a hard look in the mirror and ask ourselves, where are we at? Do that self-assessment, right? Um, and, and, and to get a clear picture of where we are, because we can't get to where we want to get to if we don't understand where we're at now. Okay. There's a time and place for everything like Cole mentioned so that that we can get into prioritization, which we'll get to here in a minute when it comes to to productivity and then and then Sean with your social media, I mean, like you said, oversharing some people go, oh, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. And we have to stop worrying about what other people think about us. I've, I was told a long time ago, it's none of my business what other people think about me. Now, that doesn't mean I don't care, but it's none of my business. Right. So I will conduct myself with integrity and honor and all of the things that go into you know who i am as a person so great job you guys i think that shed a ton of light um people are really loving this the chat box is is just going crazy so let's since we're still on this on the same path of you know how we're going to crush it in our first year of real estate by taking all of these um principles and ideas and stories um what um let's see how did you get so productive in your specific area? So in other words, like for testing for your, you know, sales productivity, you're very community focused. Um, and I'm, I'm going to get to you last because I want to start um, with Cole and then go back to Sean and then come back to you so we can keep the same process going. But um, like for Sean, what did you do to get so productive in social media? How did you, how did you do it? Okay. I just figured, you know, so my first 30 days in, in real estate, I was doing a lot of cold calling, postcards, this type of thing, going after sellers. Okay. And, and, and it wasn't working very well. It, it, was, it was horrible. So I said, okay, Sean, you know, I was a loan officer 10 years. I know programs. It's what I know. So I said, I'm just going gonna, gonna to stop trying to get listings and I'm going to 100% hardcore focus on buyers, right? And so I was already a ham, right? As far as my personal Facebook page goes. So for me, I didn't have to struggle with it. I just said, I'm gonna do the same gosh darn thing with my business page. So I got my business uh, Facebook page together and how I got so productive, I'm gonna tell you what I tell every new agent I deal with. The very first step is you get your personal Facebook page to 5,000 personal friends. That is the first step. And then every single gosh darn person that likes you know, personal, you invite those people to like your business page. That is the first and best step I can give you because everybody I invited, I got one out of five, meaning I had 5,000 personal friends. I invited all of those people to like my business page and one out of five did it. So I had a thousand likes on my business page. 
70 days after becoming a realtor. Now I can start doing videos and things from my business page, right? And sharing them to my personal page. That's the key. Because if you only post on your personal page, one, you're probably out of compliance, depending on what state you're in, but, but only your friends can see it. And Facebook will only show a small percentage of your, of your post to your personal friends. They want you to do it on your business page, so why? So, they can, so you can boost them and pay money and this type of thing. I won't get too far into it, but that is my first thing I got productive. 5,000 people on my personal page invite every single gosh darn person and their mother to like your business page, and you post. You post memes, you post pictures, you post your chihuahua, you post the time you went to the zoo and you stubbed your toe. And it, the, the key of this thing is after every post, you're saying the same gosh darn thing. By the way, if you're interested in owning a home or selling one, Sean Cochran, broker realtor, EXP Realty, for sale chicagoland.com, wrangleyourrent.com, lassoyourlandlord.com. It's every single gosh darn time and over time people will start to want to get down with you, right? Uh, you know, over time, your, your friends are either going to pick up on it and be happy or they're going to unfollow you because you're saying the same ridiculousness all the gosh darn time. But either way, Jeff, my boy, either way, it's resonating. So that is how I started. The personal page first, then my business page, and I post early and I post often, and I will yield the floor. That is, that is awesome. Again, we're getting a lot of people who want to know more about Facebook going, gosh, 5,000, how do I get there? I only have 353. Well, and I'm sure you can, you can get into that uh, another time as well, right? So, Cole, moving on to you. What's your, what are your, what are, you know, what would you say, um, and we can even jump into the Spartan world if you want. Um, your pro and actually, I'd like to go there because that's where you also show a very high level of productivity as a world champion. Um, I mean, I, I see you at the start line. Well, not anymore because we're in different age groups, but, and you'd be gone, right? Like, so you were obviously at a very high level. How did you get there? How did you do that? What was your strategies, tips, you name it? I think we might have lost Cole's microphone. Yep. You got me now? Okay. Oh, there you go. You're in, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it. Before I, I, I kind of delve into the athletic piece, I think, you know, looking at the business aspect of just being in the military and productivity, what really helped me. I think the first thing was doing some self-study. I think everybody here right now in the audience, this is a form of self-study. You're learning, you're picking up tips and tricks and hacks and lessons learned from those who've, who've been in a business of uh, productivity is key and, and is, is critical to success. Self-study is also, whether it's books, uh, you know, different uh, computer-based training. So there's a variety of things. The other thing uh, to help be, you know, become productive uh, in my military career is seeking out effective and productive leaders uh, as mentors, right? Success breeds success. And, you know, you're probably getting some, uh, you know, some great visual cues and, and, and being introduced in this format over this week of some very productive leaders that now you can build that uh, that network, that Rolodex, where you can reach out and uh, tap into that really untapped potential. The other is trial and error and experience, and that's just going to come with time. But one of the most important as you grow outside of a singleton into a, a team is creating a feedback loop, right? So listening feedback from teammates is critical. Of course, you've got to build a culture where you can actually, uh, you know, create a climate of trust so people can talk freely. But one thing I was doing, having an after action report after a certain event, whether it's a house selling or, or whatever the case may be, to better understand and get that feedback from somebody who has a different perspective, because we don't always have the right answers uh, or the correct answers. It could be more effective or an efficient way to do something. So creating a feedback loop. The other thing is, you know, people are going to come and go in, in businesses. So I create an exit interview with anybody who's leaving my organization. And again, that's someone who may necessarily not tell me everything while they're in the organization, but on their way out, they might be a little more candid. And that candid feedback was extremely critical on way I can do things better or what is going correctly. And it gives me a little better understanding. So just remember that perspective matters. Now, with regards to athletics, the key to the, key to the productivity is, 
is removing excuses. I say this all the time, right? Uh, stop making excuses why you can't do something, but reasons why you can. You have this unique opportunity. You've been put in this position. You're fortunate. So you have to take that, remove the excuses, flip it on its head, and give reasons why you can do some, why you have this unique capability that you've been given. So I'll just hold there and we can definitely talk more. While I continue to write at a, a like furious pace, Cole, that, that was that was just awesome. I mean, it really it piggies backs it piggybacks on what you were talking about as far as taking a good look at yourself and doing a, a self assessment, you know, that that self study. And, and, and again, you guys that are here, all of you in the room, you know, pat yourself on the back because you're taking time to work on your business right now, right? We get so often, we find ourselves working in our business and grinding and grinding and grinding. We also have to take the time to work on our business. And that's that self-reflection. That's that self-study. You can really figure out where you are right now. Okay, in relation to some of these stories that you're hearing and and these keynote speakers and, you know, all of these success stories and fulfillment. And if you're sitting there going, gosh, you know, who are all these people? They, they're not like me and I can't be like them. Yes, you can. We're all the same, right? We're all human. We just be able to take the nuts and bolts and all of these ideas and ideologies and, and facts and and be able to put them actually into action you know why i can versus why i can't right flipping it's on its head and not having excuses and and that comes up in our businesses all the time you guys well we can make excuses so easily because we're all independent contractors it's easy to say ah, you know what i don't feel like doing that today well guess what you know if, if somebody like cole or or tannin or sean is on your team and uh and, and, and you're going for a run at 6 a.m., you better be there, right? Because they're counting on you. So um, you can, and when you surround yourselves with the right people. So awesome, awesome guys. Uh, great job, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna transition a little bit um, to some, some practical um, tools, resources, books, podcasts, anything of that nature that have been influential to you in, in being able to help you get going, let's say in your first year in real estate or your first year doing anything or getting started in something new, what would be some, and they don't have to be specific to what you do. It could be very specific to just being productive, right? And and because that's what we're looking for. So books, podcasts, resources, and and uh, and why. And if you have a story around any of those, um, that would be awesome as well. Tannen, why don't you go ahead and take this one? Well, you started with the wrong person because I, I love reading. I'll read all the time on my own, but to be honest, in the 20 years that I've been in real estate and related industries, I have read one book and it was because my old boss made everybody read it. And I'm glad he did because I've actually read it a couple of times. I liked it so much. And it was Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Effective, uh, Highly Effective People. So I do recommend it, but that is my one book that I read. What I, have engulfed myself in is learning from those who are successful around me. So maybe I'm not listening to podcasts and reading books. I will, I invest and I encourage everybody 30 minutes to 45 minutes every single day learning something. And sometimes it's me going back and watching a Zoom from a master class that's local here in Orlando or going back and watching a class that was in the world. I love, I think that's probably one of my favorite things that brought me over to EXP is the sharing that all of the agents do. So while I'm not reading or listening to podcasts, I'm diving deep into whatever the icons, I go to iConversations as well, because I just love all the information that they're, they're pouring into us. So um, not much of a podcast or reader, but if you go to any of these iConversations, you listen to these icons. My biggest piece of advice is you could read hundreds of books, could listen to hundreds of podcasts. If you're not putting these things into place, actually doing what they're telling you to do, and not only doing it, but doing it consistently and for longevity to actually see if it's gonna work for you, it doesn't even matter if you've read it or listened to it or not. You have to put these things into place. Love it, love it. Sean podcasts, books, resources, what can you, what did you, 
I mean, you just didn't, maybe you figured it out on your own, but I'm guessing that you, you leaned into something, you leaned into a resource, whether it's a person or, or um, a book or a podcast. What, what did you do? How did you get to, to this big, you know, social media presence? So what I figured, uh, Jeff is I'm a big movie guy, right? So I imagine my fellow agents up here read way more books than I do. Cause I kid you not, I haven't read a full book since college. And I was probably the, the cliff notes version. I can't sit still. I I'm always on the go. Um, but as far as podcasts, I, I, I watch a gentleman named Jocko. It's called Jocko motivation. Every morning I, when I get up, I do two things. I make my bed. Um, and I won't get into a long drawn out story of that, but if you're ever on YouTube, look up uh, General William McCray. He's a Navy Admiral and, and his speech is called, if you want to change the world. Uh, and he says, start by making your bed. Uh, and, and then I listen to Jocko Motivation, the, it's called Good, right? And I'll, I just posted the, the YouTube to that Jocko Motivation, Good. And it essentially, it basically says that, you know, no matter what problems you're having, no matter what's going on, good. Right. And you can you can keep going. Um, but as far as me, how did I start getting into it? I just figured. Rent is expensive, especially in the greater Chicago land area. And how can I tap into that? How can I constantly push into people that gosh darn it, renting is more expensive than owning a, a, a joint of your own. So when I made up my mind to do that, Jeff, and I told you it was about 30 days afterwards, uh, starting. I figured I'm going to hard focus all of my strengths and energy into hammering, crushing, murdering, destroying you with that same gosh darn message. I'm going to make videos about it. I'm going to make posters. I'm going to, I'm going to interview people about it. I'm just going to do whatever I got to do to let you know that renting is no good, right? You got to, you can't do it anymore. And if you're friends with Sean, if you're friends with the cowboy, I'm going to hammer it into your head. So I started doing it video after video, after post, after post, after video, after video. And Jeff, I'm telling you, brother, one day my inbox started, started chiming. Sean, I saw your video, brother. Uh, my wife and I, we, we want them to stop making our land more rich. Or we pay 1800 bucks for a two bedroom joint. And the first thing out of my mouth is, well, go apply with my lender partner and I'll, I'll talk to you after you're done. So I won't go long drawn out on that, but that's what I did. I, I listened to those two uh, gentlemen for the podcast part, but I'm not a big book guy. I just want to get out, get my butt out there and do it. And I yield the floor. Yeah, now that we have a, a couple of avid readers in our group, I'm just teasing you guys. Um, I mean, there's. I was listening to something this morning just about how um, audio is really taken over um, because we have the ability to, to stream audio on all of our different devices, and you know we can't sit in the in the car and drive and read a book. Um, I mean, I guess we could. It wouldn't be uh, the most productive, right? Uh, and and how audio has become great. So. Um, Awesome, awesome stuff there. I get it. Cole, resources, books, podcasts, uh, anything that, that you feel that the audience could use to, to get started. I mean, that's really what this is about, is getting started. Yeah, I have to uh, second uh, Tannen's comment about uh, seven habits of uh, highly effective leadership. I completely concur. I mean, that is a must tap into. Uh, it should be for your library. Um, I'm in a four-star command special operations command and that is one of the books our mid-grade leaders are required to read and, and that book's been around for a while so i will tell you it's applicable uh it stands the uh, base of time um so i definitely must read the other one i uh, put in the comment box is uh the second book uh, by simon sinek in a series but leaders eat last right a company's why is critical but it's only the beginning why was his first book um, the next step is how do you get people on board with your why? You know, how do you inspire deep trust, commitment to you know you, the company, uh, and one another? So uh, I definitely recommend that. So uh, again, Simon Sinek, leaders eat last. And the and the last comment I would say is is those resources you probably already have. Um, you know, I one of the one of the the mantras in the military is always you know improve your position right and when we talk about self assessment looking at ourselves um, are you technically competent to do your job effectively and efficiently and i'll just give you a quick idea right so having technical competence means you know you are capable of effectively using you know whatever tools you have for me it's my weapon my radio you know my vehicle whatever equipment it is required to complete my mission 
So for instance, a lot of times radios for combat operations, it's a very detailed process to get special communication, secret communication uploaded. Well, it takes time to learn that when I have a myriad of other tasks. And a lot of times I would have to relay on my combo guy to help me out. Well, as I, and that takes time. Now, as I learned that trade, right, that allowed me to be more efficient and focus on other things. So I say, look at yourself. So it, just like in, in your business, think about the tools you use to do your job. Do you have you have you know uh, a lot of data you're looking at. Are you technically competent in Excel? Uh, do you have to work in presentations? So are you a proficient at working in PowerPoint, Keynote, OneNote? So gaining that technical competence in the tools of your trade will allow you to be exceptionally, exponentially more productive. So and there, you know, you could unpackage and take a look at what you do every day that maybe you're you know lacking on that competence level and dive deep into that. All I can say to that is, wow. Um, I think you guys can probably understand why um, when I first approached Cole, I had seen him on social media at a race and I was like, man, I'm going to meet this guy, right? And I, like finding somebody who's doing something that I wanted to do, right? We all have that. Like we, we, we probably see real estate agents out there that are, that are doing what we want to do, right? And you can tell why. I, I mean, and this guy spent two hours with me. He didn't have to spend any time. He could have said hi, and but he shared all of this stuff, and it just it resonates. So thank you for that, Cole. Um, Tannen, thank you for for yours as well. Um, I'm gonna send you some books to read as well as you, Sean. Um, no, I'm just teasing you guys. Uh, you guys are you guys have been amazing. We have about 13 minutes left. What we're gonna do here is uh, is I am going to try to go through the chat box and get as many of these questions. Questions um, as I possibly can. So, if you're in the audience and you asked a question, um, you got to understand this chat box is massive. Go ahead and ask your question again, and I and I can go ahead and and if it, and ask who it's specific to. We're going to spend about five to maybe ten minutes um, going through these questions and see what we can do to, and then we'll unpack everything. And uh, hopefully, you guys will stick around for the next set. We have another three just amazing amazing all real estate agents in the next section too so we'll get real real nitty-gritty on real estate agents okay oh and that's the other thing you guys uh tan and cole and sean if you could please post in the chat box how people can get a hold of you where they can find you please put your social media links in there um and how people can get a hold of you It'd be great all right let's see uh tannin what's your advice for new agents i know that's a huge question but see if you can uh, in a yes. minute or less Okay, so I'll try to do it in a minute less. All right, so joining in with my husband, one of the things that we came across or one of our excuses was, you know, how how are we gonna grow our business? You know, we've got the same group of friends. So my big thing was to grow my own sphere. And how did I do that? I jumped into everything that I had. So if you remember me saying, my husband and I totally broke, didn't have any money. We wanted to farm in our neighborhoods, didn't have money for postcards. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet people. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna meet everybody I can and I'm gonna give back to my community. And I really wanna get involved. So I joined committees, I joined PTAs, I joined um, volunteering groups, I joined coffee clubs. I was at the forefront of every single thing that I could do because I didn't have money, but I had plenty of time to do that. So my thing was growing my sphere and getting to know as many people as I can. Um, it has worked out so well for us that we can't even go to the grocery store without somebody recognizing who we are from being in our community and talking to us about real estate. Now, when I'm out in the community and I'm out there meeting people and I'm doing things, I'm not talking real estate to them. I'm talking to them about how awesome it is where we live and how awesome we're going to make it and what we're doing as, as a team to be involved in it. So my advice to you guys is get out there, get to know your community, get to know your neighborhood, get to know your neighbors. We ended up building a patio on our front porch just so we could sit out front and wave hi to all our neighbors on our block and meet people. And it's been awesome. So we, we've grown our business and our community, and I'm trying to be quick, from one to two transactions a year to 16 to 20 transactions a year in two years. So yes, get on your board, get, just get involved and get to know your neighbors. That is that is so awesome, Tan. And we talk a lot about growing your database, your sphere of influence. You know, and, and Cole mentioned earlier, it's it's about people, right? It, it's about the people. And and speaking of Cole, there's a question for you, and then I'll have one for you, Sean, and we'll wrap it up here. Um, 
Oh gosh, where did it go? Let me go back. I'm um, Paul. Like long lasting habits. Yeah, see, always ahead of me. Always. No. <laughs> hey, this is pretty simple. It's all about rep, uh, repetition, right? You got to just continue to do that, work through that. So, you know, obviously, it, it, you know, different habits. Uh, obviously, we're looking at those positive habits, but it's simple. It comes down to repetition. Is it a priority? Is it a goal? And stick to that and work through that because if it's important enough to put the effort into it's important enough to see it through so it's all about just repetition repetition oh absolutely i, I couldn't agree more and i would i would tack on to that it's the, it, it, the repetition needs to be doing it the right way right because if we're repeating something and doing it the wrong way we're just going to drive ourselves crazy so cole is absolutely correct all right sean question for you buddy <clears throat> you may have already answered in the chat box but everybody else would probably like to hear this as well um, this is from garrett if you're a new agent trying to grow your social media but you don't have any business what do you post what do you post well um First of all, follow the whole game 5,000 friends thing and invite them all and trust me, you'll have people uh, after that. But what do you post? Anything and everything to do with real estate and, and, and housing, but what I found always worked the best are programs. What I mean is no one in general cares that we are realtors. There's 1.6 million realtors in the National Association of Realtors registered and another God knows how many that do not belong to that organization. So no one cares. So what I know for sure is that as, as far as buyers go, buyers love programs, right? Down payment assistance programs. Uh, you know, as, as a realtor, you should know that, you know, 620 score that qualifies you for USDA and USDA is zero, uh, zero dollars down payment. As a realtor, you should know uh, the best one or two down payment assistance programs in your local community or state, Illinois has Ida, which is a 640 score, gets you $7,500 or $6,500 uh, down payment in form of a grant, as long as you make under $101,000, depending on the county. The reason I say that to you specifically is because I know them off the top of my head. I took time to study them. So when I post, I can post about programs. Hey, everybody, did you guys know that in the city of Elwood, only 11 miles from Joliet, you have a 640 score, you can buy a house up $400,000, no money down. 90% of people don't know that. And I do those program posts because that's when people start clicking the link and saying, you know, damn, I, I didn't know that, right? Uh, I have loan officers reach out that didn't know about some of the programs I post. So I stay learning about programs. That, that's the one thing. And two school districts, when, you know, all of us have an EXP uh, website, right? So when I post things from my website, I'll search by school district because when people tell you they want to live in a town, if they have kids, what they really mean is they want their kids to go to ABC school, right? And we all know that three or four towns may filter into certain school districts or certain high schools. So when I do the posts about, hey, click this link, these are all the cities, uh, I'm sorry, these are all the homes for $300,000 and under that the kids go to Naperville North, Naperville Central, and uh, Naperville South, uh, you know, high school and those always seem to do well because people in general if you have a family you want your kids to go to grade school right so those are two things you can post learn about some programs find a loan officer wherever you are have him or her share the two or three best programs they know about it you're not a licensed loan originator so you don't want to do too much but learn about these programs at least enough so you can speak intelligently about them you know basically and you post those things on your business page you share them to your personal page join some local Facebook groups, share them there, and all of a sudden you'll get people in your inbox. Hey, brother, can you tell me about that USDA you were talking about? And then here we go. First question out of my mouth is, have you ever been pre-approved? Nope, here, let's do this first. Click this link, it's my loan officer partner. Fill this thing out, it'll take you five minutes. Text me after you filled it out. You never know, you may have a client right there. So, so, so to reiterate, uh, post about school districts and post about specific mortgage programs. That is how I, uh, that is the things I posted when I was new to gain uh, some good traction. And of course, uh, I yield the floor. That's awesome, Sean. That is, that is so cool. Um, guys, we are coming up to the top of the hour. There is a ton of questions in the chat box. I know each of the three, uh, our guests up here, looks like four or two, um, Alston's up here. And uh, uh, 
definitely reach out to them individually. I, I, I can tell you from my experience and, and my, my relationships with these three up here that they will get back to you and they will, they will guide you in the right direction. Um, there is a gentleman named Tony Schwartz who's been very, very uh, – he wants to, he, he's got, he, he, I'm going to give him a minute because he's asked me a few times. He's an icon agent. He's a trainer. Um, Tony, go ahead and unmute yourself. You got one minute, my friend. I uh, greatly appreciate it. Can you hear me okay? Can we you got you. All right? Yep, all right, we got so, you loud and clear. So, so I do a training in the world called uh, Relationship Marketing, How to Stay Top of Mind. And this, you guys' comments have been absolutely amazing. The one thing that I tell, I, I'm a certified mentor also, and the thing I tell my, my new agents there's one book that I highly recommend. It's called Getting Things Done by David Allen. An excellent book on organizing your day and organizing your database and organizing the stuff that you're doing. The other things that I tell my, my, my new agents is focus on systems, get them in place. You, you get inundated sometimes with almost too much information. So find what works for you and then make it, make it happen. In other words, use KV Core. Figure out how you wanna use KV Core in your business and then um, get out there and network and, and have a system in place to do follow-up after you're done networking. So I do a lot of working through chambers and different types of events. If you're gonna take the time to go out and connect with people, whether it be on social media or live events, you gotta have systems in place to follow up with people. Um, I use a program that I do for mailings of gifts and cards and all that kind of stuff, but there's a ton of stuff out there, but, but gang, Listen to all the stuff that you learned today from this group because it's amazing, but but also then narrow it down and focus on the things that are going to work get things done at a time because otherwise you get overwhelmed and you think you have to be perfect at everything and you don't. Uh, it, you just got to get out there and start making this stuff happen and have systems in place to do that follow up for you. I Love appreciate it. you allow, allowing me to talk. Yeah, absolutely, Tony. And that was that was a great segue that's going to come into our next session here, um, which is the top three ways to launch your real estate business. We have about three minutes until the top of the hour. I just want to give a big thank you and an applause to our three guests that were kind enough to join us today. I really appreciate the three of you. You're super special to me. Um, we have great really I just uh, I'm, I'm over the moon. This was an incredible, incredible session. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will let you guys go, and I'm going to turn it over to the Rolling Stones. <laughs>